Located in the northeastern corner of Florida, St. Augustine is considered today the oldest city in the United States. Founded in 1565 by Spanish explorers, the city has become a well-known destination for travelers. A chance to see Spanish colonial architecture, to walk the oldest streets in the U.S., and even to visit the Fountain of Youth claimed was found here by Ponce de Leon, in his search for eternal youth. With a population of about 15,000, the lifeblood of the city is tourism. With millions of visitors each year, lured by the sense of discovering a unique and historic part of America. Over the centuries, St. Augustine has also become known for its many haunted places. Being over 400 years old, it's not surprising the city has gained a reputation as one of the most haunted locations in America. In this video, we will take a look at two of the best known haunted places. A haunted castle where nightly ghost investigations take place. Also what may be the most known haunted location in the city, the lighthouse on the island of Anastasia. Where a tragic tale of three young girls, that met their untimely death in the 18th century, and are believed to still haunt the lighthouse to this day. You're welcome to join along, as we take a look at the haunted city, of St. Augustine. Being in St. Augustine, one of the oldest and most haunted cities in the U.S., it's not surprising the Ripley Museum has also a darker history, and considered by many, as the most haunted place on the eastern seaboard. The museum offers a nightly haunted castle investigation, and each guest is supplied with standard paranormal equipment, to help them in their search for spirits or poltergeists, in their self-guided tour of the museum at night. Good evening, folks. My name is Cheyenne Chelsea Jack Twain. We'll be your ghost guide tonight. I'll give you our history, how to use our equipment, then you'll be on your own to investigate your people, things that have killed people, and things that are people. So a very lively collection in there, if you ask me, and can we guarantee you'll see a ghost? No. They are on the schedule. They're not on the payroll. They do it, say please. We have ghosts this entire time. Boo. For those of you with the EMF meters, hold out onto the top orange with lanterns in hand, the group splits up to start their investigation for possible paranormal activity on their own. And being equipped with an EMF meter, they can measure for any cold spots, which are common when spirits appear. It also can detect any electromagnetic disturbance in the air, as another sign for otherworldly activity taking place. Each person is also supplied with a pen laser light. The laser shines a grid pattern. This is useful when trying to detect movement of poltergeists or spirits, more easy to see against a grid background. It's believed by some paranormal investigators, that as many as 18 spirits haunt this castle. But there are two that stand out above the rest. Back in 1944, when the castle was being run as a hotel, a fire broke out one April evening, and two women died that night from the fire. Local legend says that Ruth Hopkins Pickering and Betty Neville Richeson, who perished in the 1944 fire, were actually murdered first, their bodies were then burned by their assailant to cover his tracks. The mystery suspect only signed in the hotel ledger with only an X, in place of his name. And after the fire, he disappeared without a trace. His identity still unknown today. And it is believed by some, that Miss Hopkins and Richeson's spirits, to this day still haunts the castle.
located on the barrier island of Anastasia. The St. Augustine Lighthouse has been a beacon for seafaring ships for over a century. The lighthouse was the second tower to serve as a guide to ships for this Atlantic coastal city. The first lighthouse, built over 200 years earlier, had fallen to decay and ruin. Being constructed too close to the shore, the Atlantic waters over time took its toll. Completed in 1874, the lighthouse was equipped with what is called a Fresnel lens, named after its inventor. This powerful 9-foot tall lens could project a beam of light up to 25 miles out to sea. And the Fresnel lens was often called the invention that saved a thousand ships. By the 1970s, the lighthouse and much of the grounds were in need of major repairs. A small group of 15 women stepped in before it was to be sold and demolished, known as the Junior Service League of St. Augustine. They contracted with the county and Coast Guard, to take over the care and restoration of the lighthouse, along with its surrounding buildings and grounds, and today is managed as a maritime museum. Being so ancient, the lighthouse grounds has also some tragic stories with hauntings, that add to its mystic and lure for visitors. Having gained a reputation as a paranormal hotspot, nighttime haunted ghost tours are today a popular part of the attraction to the museum. When it comes to experiencing haunted encounters at the lighthouse, of spirits and apparitions, movements and voices, and even ghostly footprints. The best known case of a haunting involves three young girls that all died together in a tragic death that occurred during the construction of the lighthouse in 1873. The construction project took three years to finish before its opening. And the entire project was under the supervision of Mr. Hezekiah Pitty, who traveled all the way from Maine with his wife and three daughters to oversee the construction site. A short railway was erected to move supplies from ships docked at Salt Run to the building site about 500 yards inland. It was in one of the small railway carts that the three girls, along with a good friend, loved to play. Riding it downhill like a roller coaster, starting the ride from the construction site and applying the brakes just before it reached the end by the dock. On July 10, 1873, the three pity sisters, Mary, sister Eliza, and their youngest sister Carrie, along with a friend who is unknown, were riding in the cart as normal. But this fateful day, the wooden board that stopped the cart from going into the water was not in place. The cart carrying the girls flipped into the water, trapping the girls underneath. Only the youngest sister was saved in time. The other three girls perished. Shortly after, Mr. Pity and his wife, left to go back home to mourn the loss of two of their daughters. The ages of the daughters were 13 and 15, and the friend was of age 10. Shortly after the tragic deaths of these three young girls, stories started to circulate of hearing young voices, that sounded as if they were playing on the lighthouse grounds. But each time workers would go to see who it was, there was no one to be found. Over the following months and years, the lighthouse began to earn the reputation of being haunted by the spirits of the three girls. And the girls over the past century have become the most active and mischievous spirits around. Being very playful spirits, the girls enjoy playing hide and seek. And some visitors in the lighthouse have reported being nudged from behind, or the sensation of being poked and pinched, as they climb up the tower. Even the lighthouse staff have had their encounters. One night, when the lighthouse tower had already been closed and emptied out, as a lone staff member was closing up for the night, he heard giggling at the top of the tower. But upon investigation, there was no one to be found. Another staffer reported having their shoelaces at times being untied, with the faint sound of giggles often being heard. The three girls even have left footprints on occasion 
and it seems a favorite spot for the girls, is in the basement of the lighthouse keeper's house. Affectionately known by some as the tricksters. These ghostly children have become three of the most sought after by paranormal investigators, as visitors continue to be pranked, surprised and sometimes scared. At this haunted lighthouse, at St. Augustine. Since the earliest known records of civilization, humans have been fascinated with the idea of the supernatural and paranormal. Most of us have experienced events that seem at times to defy explanation. So it's not surprising we are tempted to be open to the possibility of things that can't be explained away by science. It was in the early 20th century that the famous magician Harry Houdini took it upon himself to lend his talents to a serious investigation of the paranormal, with the hope of finding evidence of the afterlife. He became known as the medium buster in his time, offering a large cash prize for anyone that could show evidence of the supernatural. But no one was able to do so. With Mr. Houdini's training in magic, he was able to expose every medium he met. He said when he died, he would try to come back from the dead, and his wife would be able to know if he really was able to reach out, as he shared a code that only the two of them knew. After his death, Mrs. Houdini tried to contact her husband through mediums, but after 10 years of trying, she finally gave up, concluding her deceased husband never did reach out to her. For many skeptics, if anyone could ever come back from the dead, Harry Houdini would be the one. In the world today, skeptics and believers are both in abundance. Ghost hunting has become a popular pastime for both the serious and amateur investigator. But if spirits and haunted places do exist, how would we be able to properly probe such things? An indispensable tool in today's ghost hunter's arsenal is known as a EMF meter. An EMF detects electromagnetic fields, measuring them with a bright LED array that moves from green to red depending on their strength. Originally made to locate potentially harmful EMF radiation from nearby power lines or household appliances, the EMF has become popular for another use, detecting ghosts. Many ghost hunting investigations also make use of laser lights. We are seeing here a green grid pattern created by the laser to make it easier to spot any ghostly movement you may encounter while hunting for spirits. So if spirits do exist, ghost hunters have developed some tools to search them out. But where do these apparitions really come from? Many of these ghostly figures seem to be found where a tragic and traumatic death or deaths have occurred. Leading some to speculate these may be just echoes of the past. There is a theory, called the stone tape theory, that hypothesizes ghosts and hauntings are like tape recordings, where mental impressions during emotional or traumatic events were imprinted with some form of mental energy onto the surrounding area. All we are witnessing is nothing more than a psychic recording in a continual playback loop. This may account for some phenomena, but there are cases where the ghosts interact with people. So more than just an imprinted recording seems at work here. Another theory borrows from physics, suggesting these are not really ghosts, but actual people in another dimension, and at times under the right circumstances, can be seen by our world. But because it's from another dimension, it presents itself as more a shadowy and weak extension into our dimension. Some go a step further, and use the many worlds hypothesis to suggest these ghostly beings are just different versions of ourselves. The many worlds hypothesis says there exist many Earths, resulting from quantum effects that spawn countless branches of the universe, with different events occurring in each. So all we are seeing, is nothing more than a glimpse at times, into one of these parallel branches of Earth. <laughs> 